the IPCC special report on 1.5 brought it home very clearly uh, what the role of um, carbon dioxide removals could be in the future. Um, and if we are honest, um, I think the current governance system that we inherit from the Kyoto Protocol does not fully address that. And the first thing I think Louise is right on that is um, you need to set yourself a target, a target that includes both on one side the emissions and on the other side the removals. And that is what um, the Commission and the EU, EU has been doing um, over the last years. The second thing is um, that you need to look at the transparency side, which is the monitoring, reporting and verification. I think there is a lot of experience that we have already, um, but I think we need to um, make sure that we this monitoring, reporting, verification will really capture the issue. And one of those is um, what Louise was mentioning, that you need to distinguish between those that really reduce the CO2 in the atmosphere and the others that, okay, capture before it goes as an emission into the atmosphere. And then thirdly, it is the issue of the nature-based solutions or approaches, as some might say. Um, and there's the issue of the permanence. Um, and that is not only for the nature-based ones, but it's also for the things that now come into play is the carbon capture and use, uh, where it is circulating within the economy and you need to see what is happening at the end of the day and for how long is it going to be stored somewhere um, in the material. And here I think the important thing is to acknowledge that we are living in a dynamic system. So we will have um, things that are not permanent. Still, they can be helpful, uh, even if they store things over time. You just need to be very honest about it and very transparent about it um, so that you don't call something permanent that is not going to be permanent um, at a certain point in time.